Hey guys, welcome back to the Crypto Explorer channel. Today we're going to take a look at Aperture Finance. It's going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial how to provide liquidity with this effortless liquidity pool manager that basically what does it do? It has, allows you to manage your V3 concentrated liquidity pools automatically. They have so, some different blockchains they operate with. There's a ton of them to choose from. The main ones are going to be here most likely. And you can also select two Titan of DEXs, Uniswap and PancakeSwap. So if you are looking to provide liquidity with these big players in DeFi, yeah, Aperture Finance has you covered. Aperture Swap operates solely on Manta Network but you can take a look at that yourself. Me, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go with Base as a blockchain and Uniswap as a DEX to provide liquidity. And which pair am I going to provide liquidity? You might be wondering that yourself. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go on Uniswap and check the metrics for the most traded tokens because more volume means more fees and that's what I am looking out for. All right, so here on Uniswap, um, I'm just on analytics. Now here on the top pools, that's what I will be looking at more closely. I've sorted this out by seven day volume because I wanted to have a metric for the best performing pair for the past week. Yeah, you could go deeper on this using other tools like DeFi Llama and see how has this been operating in a longer time frame. But usually, you will always see that the native token that you pay gas fees with paired with the stablecoin will be the best performing one. So on Binance, we were looking at something like USDT BNB. On Ethereum ETH USDC, for example, here on base, it's the same thing. You can see the first two pairs for the more traded pairs for the last seven days have been actually wrapped ETH and the stablecoin. USDC or USDBC, which is the stable coin also of base blockchain. So basically there's going to be differences between those, but basically they're both stable coins and they are both trading on a volume much higher than the TVL. Even if you go here on 24 hour time frame, you can see that the volume has surpassing the TVL multiple times, which is awesome because that's what we're looking at, high volume, meaning high fees. So that's the, the one I will be going with, wrap ETH, USDC. So let's go back on Aperture and let me set that up myself. All right, so the first step is here on Aperture, connecting your wallet, I'm gonna click that. And now you get to choose three different DEXs, Uniswap, PancakeSwap or Aperture Swap. Different networks also, there's eight total networks to choose from ethereum arb op polygon i'm gonna go on base among all the choices that they have and i'm going to connect with metamask wallet so you see here everything is simply laid out to you you just have to pick what you want and get started and now that i'm already connected with my web3 wallet uniswap v3 liquidity positions appear here so i need to click on new position and one of the cool things about aperture is this feature here this toggle button that you can click zap in basically what this does is that you don't have to provide both tokens although we are going to deposit within one liquidity pair you only need to have one of the elements of that pair, one of the tokens of that pair. For example, we're gonna go with ETH and USDC, as I already told you, and you can pay with solely ETH or solely USDC. And the Zap feature, what it does is that it will automatically convert the full amount into the both tokens that you want to deposit on. So I really like that Aperture has integrated that here. So let's go and choose on the pair. You can select the token directly here from the list or just search from name or paste the address. I just selected from the list. And if you're not sure of which fit tier you should choose, just go with what Uniswap already showed you. Remember when I was looking through the top pairs, this specific one had a 0.05% fee tier. So that's what I'm going to go with here. Although you could choose a different one. Uh, but now here is amount to deposit, add liquidity with, and I can select a token to add liquidity 
specifically because I had toggled this zap in function here. So let's go and pay with ETH because all my funds are on ETH right now. And you don't want to go max because if I would go with max, I would not be left with any ETH whatsoever to pay for gas fees. So I will need to take that into consideration. Keep always some of the token you need for gas fees on the side for you to manage your position later on, all right? And now that you inserted the value that you want to deposit, uh, there's more settings that you can change here, mostly with uh, regarding slippage. So you can also play around with that. I will leave it as it is. And now I will just start to move my ranges around here. And although everything is automated by Aperture Finance, the more volatile the market, you will always eventually end up paying fees. So that's also something to consider. Also, instead of just having your cross range here 50-50 around the price, you can also move this around if you're trying to time the markets. If you're predicting ETH price to go down, you should put this range on here to the left. Or if you're predicting ETH price to go up, you could put this range more on the right side. And as you do that, you will be anticipating market movement and also saving yourself some more in fees and having that position generating revenue for longer be before it gets triggered and readjust. So now I just clicked open position. You can check all the, the details here for your specific case. And now I will confirm open position. From here, I need to move on to MetaMask and accept the transaction, which I will do just now. All right, guys, so liquidity position has been deployed. That leads us to step number two off hands liquidity managing based on our triggers so if you want to have your position constantly generating you fees passive income basically you need to set up this recurring rebalance strategy so for that you have two triggers so in this case you have price or ratio to determine for example the tokens that you have on your pairs if or uscc in this case since USDC is a stablecoin, I should go with ETH if I want to set my trigger setup to price. And then I can tick this on and off for both above and below. But you always need to have at least one tick then. So if I want the pool to be rebalanced when ETH is above a specific price, I would insert here the price. And I, win, I would insert also optionally a time buffer. Why is the time buffer very important? Well, the time buffer basically keeps you safe from paying gas fees if market is too volatile. So if you would want a time buffer to be, for example, 12 hours or 24 hours, that is the amount of time that your trigger must be in place in order for your position to rebalance. So let's say you go with a 12 hour time buffer, but the trigger only has been met for 11 hours. You won't be experiencing any changes. No rebalances would be happening within your pool. So only when the time buffer is met, that's when the rebalance will happen. So I'm going to set up a time buffer here of 12 hours and I will go with ratio instead of price because what ratio does is that it's pretty much a off hands approach. Currently you see that my ratio is 30% wrap ETH and 70% USDC and regardless of price, liquidity pools depending on market conditions they will constantly be moving so if ETH price goes down, for example, my liquidity token amount in ETH would be going up. If ETH price goes up, my ETH amount would be going down and my USDC would be going up. And that's why I want to set this for ratio. And I want when ratio for the ETH token to be above 90%, I want this to kick in. And when it's below 10% I want this to kick in because it's on the very extremities of my range and if the ratio in this specific case is kept for at least 12 hours that's what I'm going to set in place for my rebalance to occur. Again you can play with this at your own will so let me go ahead with that and now I will click on save trigger you can see already the trigger ratio here 
the time buffer that I chose. And the rebalance action also allows you to put your tickers, right? Minimum, maximum. So basically the range of your new position. How wide will it be? I like to keep it pretty tight. So I'm going to go with 5% on each side. So overall 10% for my concentrated liquidity position. Bear in mind also that any uncollected fees will be collected and reinvested into the new position after rebalance. So whenever it rebalances, your fees go automatically to be added to your position, aka compounded. There's going to be a gas fee ceiling and a slippage setting that you can also tweak. But from here on, you just have to click on enable AO. Then you accept a transaction on your wallet. It gives you a warning because you're providing access to your NFT, to your position, which is something needed in order to make this strategy happen. From there on, you accept that and you also have to click on create strategy once again. And there you go, you have successfully set up a recurring rebalance strategy. And from here on, you can manage your position and simply access it by logging into Aperture. You can click it and then you will have this display here showing you the liquidity amount. You can add, you can remove. It shows you that it, it is in range or out of range. It's going to also have the unclaimed fees so you can turn on auto compound, you can reinvest, you can collect fees. And the cool feature is also when you do reinvest, what's happening is that they will use that same zap feature that, that I've told you about earlier. And if you scroll all the way down, you will see that you can apply again to this same position, the liquidity intense tools, recurring, automated rebalances, pre-scheduled position close. And if you're wondering about the differences, what we just did is setting up a recurring rebalance. And the automated rebalance tool will allow you to set up one-time rebalance triggers based on specific conditions, again, such as price, pull ratio, or time. For example, you can reconfigure it to rebalance your ETH USDC position back to a 50-50 ratio if ETH rises to a certain price. It simplifies the process by doing all the steps in one single action without leaving any leftover tokens, while the recurring balance that we just went through is designed to execute repeatedly every time your trigger condition is met. This means that if you set a condition based on price or ratio, the tool will continuously monitor and rebalance your position as needed. So summing it up, the automated rebalance is a one-off event. They even have a 90-day sticker, so whenever you set it, it has a lifespan of 90 days, after which it will be automatically deleted, while the recurring rebalance is an ongoing process that keeps your liquidity position in line with your strategy over time. When it comes to the pre-scheduled position close tool, this one is specifically tailored to managing liquidity positions with a set exit strategy. So overall, the pre-scheduled position close tools adds value by providing convenience of setting up an automated triggers based on pricing, pull ratio and time, which can be particularly useful for those who cannot or do not prefer to monitor their positions continuously. Summing it up, these are the three main tools of Aperture. Use them to your will because right now they're free and in the future they're gonna cost something. Aperture will start taking their cut and rightfully so. But yeah, so far that's not yet something you need to worry about. So get comfortable with Aperture. Automate your liquidity positions yourself. If you don't want to worry about none of this and you want to, someone else to, to do the strategies, and do them for you. You can also choose other protocols such as Gamma, like I said, I'll link that down in the description if you wanna check it out how it works and there's many others. But guys, this is it for today. That's what I wanted to share with you, Aperture Finance. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Like, subscribe, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.